All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have 7 o'clock, so why don't we get started? Um, we have a, a sparser crowd than usual tonight, but that's understandable given the elements. Uh, we'll start with our traditional moment of silent reflection. And uh, we recognized just two days ago the 12th anniversary of one of the uh, worst days in the history of our community with the Sago mine disaster. Uh, it's amazing to me that it's been 12 years already, but let's continue to keep uh, the fallen miners as well as their families uh, in our best thoughts, prayers, and wishes this evening. Thank you very much. And Mr. Mike Kozad, uh, one of our representatives with the Atlantic Coast Pipeline Project is here this evening, and I've asked him as a veteran to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Kozad. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to introduce uh, to those of you who may not be acquainted with a couple of our newest hires, um, assisting Ambie ably in the taking of the minutes tonight is Alice Teach. Is that? Did you get drafted into this? Is that? Yeah, I, I came for the parking ordinance. Oh, <laughs> you came to complain. I see. <laughs> well, welcome, Alice. We're glad to uh, have you here. And uh, in case you didn't know, uh, Tuesday was Callie uh, Cronin Sam's first day as our new information facilitator, coordinator, and grant writer. And uh, welcome to City Council. And, uh, I, I had to, uh, as I was going through the agenda draft, I forgot to tell Teresa and Barb to add you to the list. But uh, henceforth, you'll be on there with everybody else. So. Say again? I could just ease into ease it. Ease into it? Well, good, good. We're still counting on a full report, though, Callie. You're not getting by easy, right? Okay. Yeah, she's, she's already got millions of dollars she's bringing us. So <laughs> you never know. Okay. Uh, the only other uh, guest that we have is uh, Rhett uh, Dusenberry, who's been here before. Uh, Mr. Dusenberry, do you want to say anything to council? Just uh, Well, I'm <clears throat> on behalf of Congressman Mooney, greetings and... Glad to be with you again, and I'm sorry that the uh, elements are as tough as they are, so I was not to have a, a really good crowd. But it's good to be with you, and, and I would like to thank Buckhannon for all their assistance and, and uh, Chamber Create, and also the uh, use of your uh, facilities over here. Y'all have allowed us to do office hours where we can help folks with VA, social security claims, etc. And I've also, I'm looking forward to meeting you. I've been working with Jay <laughs> on some letters of uh, support for, for uh, we already got those out with the applications for the generators for the uh, wastewater and fresh water. Awesome. So uh, we're working to get, get busy with you and help you all any way that we possibly can. And thank you for recognizing me and uh, everybody stay warm. Yeah. Thank you. Any, thank you. Uh, any extra gazillions of dollars over there to, in Washington that uh, Congressman Mooney can help us with, uh, Callie will be happy to, you know, sign you up with some uh, grant stuff. So, yeah, we'll look forward to working more with you. Thank you very much. <coughs> all right. I think that's all the guests except Tammy is here again. Right, Tammy, did you want to say anything? Just, uh, just, just observing as usual. Uh, department board reports. Uh, Jerry Arnold, our public works director. Jerry, you're first up. Good evening. Uh, under director's report, we um, have an employee safety training meeting scheduled for Monday, February 12th from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. That's a mandatory employee meeting. The first, uh, I have Sue McKissick from the Elcher County Health Department is going to be there as a presenter. And the topics she'll be presenting are uh, bloodborne pathogens, uh, adult immunizations, and how to deal with uh, collection of needles. So um, also have Mr. Ty Bradley from Brick Street and Ty's put together 
a uh, list of topics based on our loss runs for the past couple of years with our workers' compensation. So it'll be a very informative meeting for the employees, and again, this will be our first. We'd like to try to maybe do uh, two a year. Uh, we have all of our employees together at a, uh, a safety conference. Um, also scheduled the first of several first aid CPR and AD <coughs> training cert certification classes for all city employees with our fire department. The class will be free of charge but there's a $25 charge to issue the certification card. And again, um, you know, our, our Waste and Street Department certify every two years for first aid and CPR. And um, our fire department are, is able to teach that. So we've got all of our departments signed up now to uh, have first aid, CPR, and the defibrillation training. And we'll, we be, actually we'll, have be, we're, we'll be presenting, I'm working with J.B. Kimball right now, we'll be presenting in our next year's budget uh, as long and uh, uh, have a presentation to council about supplying these uh, automatic defibrillation devices at different areas in Buckhannon. Uh, all of our departments, we're talking uh, Walk Trail and, and Jelbun <coughs> Park areas that we have a diverse age group that uh, are utilizing facilities. I think we need to, to step up our uh, life-saving game a little bit. So we're looking at doing that. Would we install those at the various physical plants like water, sewer, and Absolutely. The yeah. Absolutely. Uh, we've had this discussion in waste several years ago. She wants one at City Hall. That's that's one of the one of the primary locations of City Hall, but again, yeah. because you have Start people working here. That one, yeah. Yeah. that too, that too, <laughs> It just never ends. <laughs> but one of the things, one of the part, well, part of the discussion on that is, we are trying, and, and again, you know that that uh, Rod Kimball is an instructor, instructor with the American Heart Association, and so JB has a pretty good uh, resource in Rod to go to, and one of the things that that one of the discussions we've had is is having equipment that uh, is currently used by the emergency squad here in Buckhannon and the fire department, the same type devices. That way there's a shelf life on some of the components. That way stocking of those components uh, will fit any of the machines that we have in, in the system. And also, it, it's also a plus that if we administer that at one of our locations that we can essentially just unplug the leads on our machine and the, the leads from the emergency squad will flow directly into those paddles. So, again, that's some of the discussion we're having about the, the actual equipment. So there'll be more to come on that in the very sure. near future. Um, supervisors, again, it's still we're we're still on the safety topics. We're doing independent or individual department safety assessments, and we will amp that up with a um, the fire department. We'll start doing facility checks for us and uh, again we'll just they'll come in and assess situ or these working situations conditions make sure we have uh, day fire extinguishers um, our uh, monitors CO monitors and things that are up to date and in place so just another step in the ongoing uh, overall safety plan we're trying to implement in, in the city water department the water's been, and as Sammy knows, the uh, water's had numerous frozen water complaints, and, and it's usually on the service side. So again, it's it's the weather, folks. Uh, the guys have been out there trying to, help it, and uh, it's been a difficult time for them. Victoria Hill uh, water storage tank. The contractor didn't work this week because of the uh, weather, but they do have two bands of the tank and the roof uh, completed on it. So. It's moving along. Sewer department, Dan Baker received his class four operator certification. Uh, the alternate agreement policy was approved by the sanitary board and working on updating the storm sewer manual details. Projects in progress, uh, the project on Swisher Street, replace culvert crossing. The sewer components complete, culvert replacement will commence when the weather permits. Uh, task completed, Boga Street, 
sewer and storm sewer line replacement is complete with the exception of some cleanup work. Um, under waste department, the tow carts have been ordered. So we'll be working on that over the next several months of getting those delivered. Street department, I don't have anything new to report other than they've been working to keep snow plow and uh, been doing some interior uh, reorganization of our street garage while the weather has been so Under engineering, Jay, just some updates on some of the projects that Jay's been working on. The FEMA Generator Hazard Mitigation Grant Program, application one and two submittal. Uh, is addressing, addressing the additional information request from FEMA. We'll submit the, addition, the additional no later than January 23rd, 18. Um, City Council, Water Board, Sanitary Sewer Board document review and the mayor's signature is required prior to submission. The Water Department Early Warning Monitoring System Phase 1 continue to work on the bid, bid package. Uh, anticipate advertising for bids on the 19th of this month. Uh, the ACP Water System Improvements, the revised agreement was reviewed. Revised by City Personnel and sent to Dominion for review and execution. Anticipate receipt of an agreement by January 11th prior to the Water Board meeting. Uh, the Gateway West Engineering Survey will begin design of the project on January 8th. Um, the Elizabeth J. Benton Townsend River, River Walk Trail Extension grant number four, if you remember, that's one we applied for last grant cycle and did not receive, so we're reapplying. Callie's working with Jay for the resubmission of that, and it's got a due date of January the 18th, and the same with the Gateway West Phase Three Transportation, which is the south side of the Gateway West product, project. Again, it's a resubmission of the grant that we previously submitted and were not successful with. And that's all I have unless there's questions. Questions for Jerry Arnold. On the Gateway West uh, project, where does it terminate? I mean, does it go under the bridge towards Lincoln Edition or stop no, at the... It terminates, at the, it terminates at the off ramp. It does not cross the tracks. North side will go to... The tracks, is that right? The north side, yes. Yep. The south side will terminate prior to um, uh, right, right, there there to, there? right there, to, right there at the where the bank comes into. Because it, in order to get it further, we would have to do a lot of step in that bank, and they've already had a big slip there to start with. So the north side is just going uh, right there at the end shorts. What is better way? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the end shorts. And what are the costs associated with the AED or the uh, defibrillators? Ballpark, ballpark CJ is somewhere between twelve and fifteen hundred dollars per unit. We're probably thinking ten or twelve or something. Well, it's, the, the, each department within the department budget, you will see those for the facilities, but within general fund, I can imagine initially three to start with, but. I would like to envision, again, that's the device. We, we will have to construct, they make a, uh, I don't know how I want to say this, it's a box that break makes it box. difficult, yes. Break glass when needed. It makes it difficult to uh, just grab the device. You have to work a little bit to get it. So, you know, with that being said, I would like to see uh, over the next course of the next couple of years with this program, see them in every one of our parks. There's cameras. <laughs> yeah. Are these mandatory classes for all employees at take? The the safety meeting on the twelfth is a mandatory meeting for the employees. The first aid safety training is very strongly encouraged and it's done during work hours. Are, are these um Jerry as when the department heads are going through and telling about the critical things they need and all that kind of stuff, this additional equipment and stuff has been brought up and discussed between them. Well, we have we. Have oh, you've been doing that this. for a long time. We've discussed time. this for okay. some time about the okay. about the ADs and, and unanimously, uh, I don't. I have not heard anyone say that no, we would not want this device on our or in our facility. I think it's a great idea to have something like that, especially when you consider the people that we have at, in Jubilee Park we on are, Friday nights. We you are know. a retirement community. That's exactly right. I think that's a great idea. So with that being in mind, I think it's 
Ultimately, Stockard, the Colonial Theater, other places where we would have good sized groups of folks. Other questions for Jerry? He's asked to take his leave after his report. So if you got something you're uh, harboring that you want to ask him, that's speak now or forever. Oh, I've got to stay for the I got to stay for the inaugural Cali report. In case the pressure is right. I'm going to bend the needle for a million dollars at Cali's family. We're going to start holding you off till the end, Cali, to uh, keep the crowd from the crowd over. Didn't realize she had a following. All right, that's great. Yes, okay, Jerry, thank you very much. Tell all the guys, uh, you know, 5 30 uh, the other morning when it's garbage truck time and it's four or five below zero, and our truck guys still hanging on the back of those trucks show yeah. up and the water lines freeze up and they're out there and knee uh, deep uh, water it, it's it, tell the story about uh, who was it that had jerry the Walmsley. blast jerry Walmsley took a blast to the face he was on the lake the other night and his foot slipped they in order to control while it's blown off in order to control it they put their foot on the on the leak and, and divert the water flow and his foot slipped and that's just right in his face and just drenched him. With these temperatures, you can imagine how Instant refreshing. <laughs> yeah, refreshing. That's a good attitude. Yeah. He's so a good guy, though. Absolutely. funds without Director of Finance and Administration, MBJ Dennis. Tell us we got some money to buy those defibrillators. <laughs> Kelly's going to look for a grant. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Okay, so uh, just ended our calendar year. The general fund money market had $649,444 in it at the end of December. Uh, your CDs, I'll just remind you, they haven't changed much. 82720 in a CD. Stalker Capital Campaign, 150516 Historic Landmark Savings Account, $3,000. Municipal Stabilization Fund, $510,000. Expenses for the month of December were more than the revenues. Uh, we had that ladder truck repair, which was around $16,000, and we had three payrolls in December. And then also we had collected more B&O in November due to some quarterly reports than we did in, de in uh, December. The uh, VFI Volunteer Fire Insurance renewed uh, January 1. Um, this premium is shared by the city and the county. The city pays approximately 46% of that. Uh, Jamie uh, delivered the information to me. Last year, the premium was 25,214. This year, it's 22,180. And this is for city equipment. We're paying our share, the city equipment is in liability. Um, financing, uh, Jerry mentioned, was completed for the uh, polycart toter system in the amount of $290,880. Now this is the waste department, not general fund, uh, to purchase 6,000 of the poly carts that will be delivered to our residential customers in the next several months. And I wanted to bring that out since the news media is here. I've talked to Callie about maybe uh, making sure some information's out there for the residents. It's, it's, um, it's a, a cart that you would place your garbage in rather than your own garbage cart. Um, it won't be picked up unless it's in that container. It will help us identify people who haven't paid and it'll also help with our men because an arm helps lift this item to put it into the truck so it'll save on any compensation claims. Um, Again, Callie's going to help me maybe try to get some information out about that since we have about 6,000 we have about 6,000 waste customers. Um, I want to remind council that uh, the West Virginia Municipal League Conference is January 21st and 22nd, and currently uh, Robbie is going. Uh, Callie is going to attend. We suggested she go to kind of get familiar with some of the you know, other municipalities and maybe learn how other governments work. Uh, and then the mayor is also attending. I also want to remind you that the State Auditor's Office is going to hold four-hour budget workshops in February and March. Two of these are in Clarksburg and Bridgeport, and they strongly suggest anyone from Council 
officials to attend that. You really do learn some information. I always go, even though a lot of it's repeat, I always learn something new from it. And it tells about how the budgets work in governments, municipal governments, and it's free of chargers. There's no cost to it. Um, I've been working on the general fund budget revision. I'm not finished with it yet. Um, I hope to have it ready by the next meeting. And then a uh, reminder that uh, filing for the offices, there's two council seats open this year and the reporter's position filing begins January the 8th. The, the, the deadline to file is January 27th. And they have candidates must file for those municipal offices here in City Hall. And then um, I've talked to Callie a little bit about the uh, volunteer grant. So if you want to segue into let her explaining that, We've been working on that a little bit. She's sure. done the work. I've just kind of answered some questions. Yeah, so. Very helpful. On the SYC uh, capital campaign, that doesn't reflect the last four or five thousand dollars. The paid. budget revision so. that I'm working on, I have to move everything around. Yeah. Yeah. Because I've got to take some money out where it was yeah. it was uh, receded into the general fund, and I have to pull that back out in gotcha. a budget revision gotcha. and send it off. Good deal. <coughs> question, Mr. Bambi. So these six thousand. 96 gallon poly cars. Yes. This is going to, be, going to be given to every city customer. That's correct. Every waste, waste, waste residential customer. That includes residential. County. So county. I'm, because I'm thinking Not if there's commercial. an office downtown. Not commercial. Okay. That they might not have a place for it, you know. Yeah, just it's residential. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. Okay, uh, are we going to dial Tom O'Neill up or do we want to just want to wait until we get down to the ordinance so that we uh, we just have to do that one time? I could dial him up. Did you want Kelly to talk about that little drink? Mm -hmm. uh, since Chief Townsend is not here, uh, Kelly, do you want to talk a little bit about the grants? Sure. Um, Jerry had already talked a little bit about the recreational trail grants I've been working on, so I won't really say too much more there. Um. <laughs> 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 and you can see the snack marks up here without being hurt. That doesn't work. We'll try to dial a prayer. They should have dialed a prayer and tried that recently. <laughs> Hey Tom. 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 Hey Tom. I can hear you. Okay, you're on standby. Just hold on there. Okay. Okay, Callie. Let's yes. hear it. Let's give us the goods now. <laughs> Well, for brevity, I won't talk too much more about Jerry already talked about the recreational trails grants, but I have been working on those a little bit. I'm all set up on the DOH grants website, so I have access there. And uh, Jay had already done quite a bit of the work there, so that's been uh, you know, a fairly smooth process. I think we're going to be fine with that deadline, January 18th. Um, just as far as how I'm thinking I might organize the days, I'll probably be trying to do more of the information coordinator or PR stuff right away in the morning. Um, but I haven't, if you've noticed, there haven't been a whole lot of new posts or that sort of thing. I'll be meeting with Rich Clemens to um, get administrative access to the Facebook page and Twitter and the website. Uh, he had been out of town, so that'll be happening soon, um, within the next, if not tomorrow, probably early next week, I'd say. Uh, so you will see, start to see uh, the posts there online. Um, I think I'm waiting at that point. I'll probably also send out some kind of introductory email to the press and other people in town. Uh, but I was going to wait so that I could have in the signature line uh, a link to our Facebook page and the website and everything will be up to date. Not that it isn't now, but I'm just waiting for that transition first. Um, and then the Volunteer Center funding that Andy had mentioned, um, Susan had shared, I think it was back in late November, early December, an what email, yeah, maybe a little before, a Volunteer West Virginia grant that's available for um, 
setting up or maintaining a volunteer center within the community and um, can be either a physical presence or a virtual presence or both and you can be advertising volunteer positions or opportunities not only within your own organization but with other organizations so I thought it might be something of value to the community um, we could list um, and come up with a little bit of a list of things that I thought we might uh, I can, vol I can email all of it to you, but I have the um, request for applications, of course, that I can send out, and then I also have what I started to put together as to what the city might be interested in uh, doing with this. And um, so I had listed kind of month to month. It's a year long. The grant is only about 5000 uh, to 30000 range. And then you can put that to use either uh, through a part-time position. I thought that might be useful to have someone coordinating this. Um, also for some web-based software so that it will go right with the city's website. Um, so it wouldn't be a separate site that they go to. It would be correlated with the, uh, the city's own site. And have a listing of uh, several events. I thought um, we always do the April Make It Shine. Uh, in coordination with Usher County Solid Waste Authority, so that might be an event that have have a cleanup. Um, AMB had mentioned that there's <coughs> a in the town we might want to focus on um, to spruce up in the spring. Um, of course, there's also the about the highway spring cleanup that we could advertise in. In May, of course, we have the Strawberry Festival, and I think that's when Festival Fridays kicks off. Um, might need volunteers for those um, that we get advertised on the site. Um, in June, I have the community gardens and continuing festival Fridays, of course, throughout the throughout the season, um, as well as the community gardens. And then the Fourth of July celebration at Drawbone. Um, Jerry had mentioned uh, um, Susan the community composting program, so mm -hmm. I thought that might be something where volunteers could be. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, Jerry. <laughs> so maybe some adult volunteers, but also maybe getting kids involved. I think you mentioned Westland, but well, also we thought maybe initially started with a couple of large, yeah, rather than being a household thing, right? Yeah. Uh, where they're generating a lot of food waste, yeah, yeah hospital and something like that. So I thought that might be another project that could use volunteers. Um, what about Stocker? Anything at Stocker? Stocker ongoing at Stocker. Um, of course, they do the. A lot of sports and classes there, but I thought also maybe having a, a coding club or a maker space type activities there and have, I know we have a lot of people in the community that can come in and volunteer their time and teach different skills that both kids and adults might be interested in learning. Um, and then maybe November has uh, America's Recycles Days is November 15th. So I thought maybe doing some kind of combined campaign then almost uh, more of a social marketing where it'd be good if you could reach out to volunteers who maybe can't easily uh, volunteer in person or just don't want to. Um, they might be able to volunteer by taking a picture with uh, their recycling bin as they put it out and then post that online and kind of challenge them to encourage maybe five friends to start recycling, get your bin and start having your recycling pick up or go to the cross Crossroads Recycling Center, take a picture of yourself doing your recycling there and then hashtag it, Buckhannon Recycles, that sort of thing. Um, and then just under ongoing, I had Stalker. Oh, um, I forgot the January, February, maybe doing a Martin Luther King Jr. Day of Service. And then in February, the Go Red American Heart Association. So that those might be it's a year long grant that can be renewed for three years. Um, so at this point, I'm just testing the water, seeing if you think this is something that we should pursue. But the deadline for the grant is January 16th, so we have to move really quickly if you do want to. Do you think you would have uh, at least outlined an application as early as next Thursday, the 11th? I have it. I need to have a, mm, like a tentative budget, but I would want to know like the budget that I have going right now has a part-time coordinator in it, so hiring a part-time coordinator. 
It also has uh, travel. I didn't mention this part. Uh, September is uh, National Preparedness Month, so I thought we could get our CERT and VIPs people involved, um, those volunteer groups, and maybe use some of this funding to send uh, one of them or two of them to the CERT program manager training that's coming up in Evansburg, Maryland, and then have whoever goes to that um, train more volunteers and um, have them do something in September to promote preparedness for all of our residences. residences. In the perfect world, uh, and we would need to post this no later than Monday, yes. we could have a special council meeting right before the water board meeting and the reason water is perfect four of us on council will already be at that meeting uh, so we'd have a quorum if uh, others couldn't be there but if others could be there that'd be terrific mm -hmm. but do you want do you want to tentatively council set a special council meeting for say 345 next thursday the 11th uh, for us to be able to act on this application I think that's good, but can, can I ask one quickie question for sure. you? Um, what about reaching out to, you know, you're always hearing about the literacy volunteers. They, they never have enough people to help mm -hmm. teach people to read. Mm -hmm. uh, is that something that maybe we could throw in there? Because oh, I, I hear that a lot. And I know that they're always talking about stuff at the parish house and here and there, but mm -hmm. the literacy volunteers would... Yeah, I'll add those to my ongoing need volunteers. Yeah. Um, Callie, my um, nonprofit management class this spring looked at a couple of different city websites for about how they solicited uh -huh. volunteers, and a couple of them had um, applications for organizations that wanted volunteers, so that someone from the city would then decide is this appropriate to be part of our volunteer right. center. And then they also had, you know, the, like you said, the job listings mm -hmm. and the job descriptions, but then an online application for people who might be interested. Mm -hmm. So is that what you're thinking that the volunteer coordinator is, will manage? I started or? looking at those, but if you have more they, info, I have, you can I share have, from that class. Yeah, I will, because they were really disparate. Some uh, of them were, because like, what they were looking at was the welcomingness of those sites, whether it would make them want to volunteer right. for the city or not. I think the one that was looking somewhat promising to me was it started with CERV Technologies, I think, but it's actually a C C E R V. Did you see that one? Mm -hmm. No, cool. Oh, okay, I'll see what if I, if I have the notes from that. But then the other thing that I was wondering about, so I know the, this grant is funded through Volunteer West Virginia, mm -hmm. but the, is their source of funding something that is renewable? Because, you, you know, we, Yes, I mean, I some of it would be seed money to get this up and going, but then how do we run it, keep it mm -hmm. going? They say it's renewable for three years, but it's 20% a match in the first year, but that can okay. be in kind also. 30% um, in the second, 40, so it keeps so increasing, the match to, keeps going yeah. up. Okay, for us yes. to sustain it. Okay. And then it's, um, you yeah, know, the commission through National Community Service. Yeah. So do you foresee the the budget for the grant, because I didn't see a budget for the proposal, do you foresee that being spent on setting this up and then it's something that you could maintain after it's up I think the budget down? I was looking at perhaps asking for around 25. My firm's 30, is that right? I think I read that. Well, it was... They, I have it split right now. I'm just using their budget worksheet. I'm going to be calling in because they have another technical assistance yes. call tomorrow at 11. So I had some questions about the way they have the budget. They have it completely broken out in their example worksheet where each expense they're showing this is our share, this is your share. But I would, I want to know if possibly, you know, there's aspects where we might be able to contribute where it's not a direct, you know. Great. So, um, definitely. Yeah, five to thirty thousand. Right? Yeah, that was thirty-nine. But mm -hmm. I guess that's why I guess I'm thinking that since it's renewable and then they're expecting the city to start sustaining it, you might think about what you could front load that they could pay for the grant money right. for, and then you know, maybe step back on the requests that need to be sustained. Because I think right. it will take time and effort to get it set up. But uh -huh. Well, for sure, that's why it. we could definitely scale it back. I don't know if um, particularly. Um, the online management system, you know, I put a paid one in here, but there may be free ones, or yeah. we might be able to just do that with the existing website without that. And, you know, probably help with that. Are you moderately optimistic that we could have an application ready by next Thursday? Yes. 
So, 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 so <laughs> uh, the question is begged. Uh, may I have a motion that we schedule a special and short uh, city council meeting for next Thursday, January 11th at 3.45. My water board starts at 4, so in 15 minutes we'll quickly discuss this uh, application proposal and act upon it. May I have a motion to that effect? So move. Second. Mr. Skinner has made a motion uh, to that effect, seconded by Council Lady Albaugh. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Hearing of the need for none, I'll call for that question. All those in favor of the motion uh, to schedule a special city council meeting one week from today at 3.45 p.m. for the exclusive purpose of considering and potentially approving this grant application. Signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, those opposed, like sign. The minutes will reflect that the motion carries unanimously. So that's great, Kelly. Kelly, will you send the proposal out to us in advance so we'll have time to look at it over and over? And then I have a question for council. Since now we have Callie here, do we want to set up some sort of alternative approval process? Do we have to approve every single proposal that she submits yeah, as a council? I think the council still is required to approve all grant applications. Okay. But uh, maybe we could do it electronically or something. She could pile them up in a big stack and we'll just uh, run right through them. Right? <laughs> the only other thing I have is that I'll be at Rotary on uh, January 30th. So. <clears throat> Do you have anything you'd like included in that presentation to Rotary? Great. About that. Sure. Well, you're going to be speaking for the chamber. What's that? You're going to speak. That's right. Good. Okay. Okay. Awesome. 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 Good. Thanks, Kelly. Yeah. Sure. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hitting the Thank ground you. running, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Correspondence and information, and Andy, I'll in impose upon you to explain this. West Virginia State Tax Department. Uh, letter regarding the assessment budget and 2% fee? Yes, that's just, you get that annually. The assessor gets 2% of, um, of the budget for the taxes that are received to manage the taxes at the assessor's office. And I, I put that in there as information for the council. Yeah. There, we have a full budget from him. It's to pay um, they use it to, for supplies in their budget. They use it for wages in their budget. But two percent of collecting the taxes from the assessor. We don't need to act upon no. it. We just have it's to do it. For you. So that this says that the, that the grand total forty two thousand two seventy nine. That's what we're. Two percent. That's what they're holding back they keep from that, yes. disbursement. Yes, they keep that. When we receive the taxes from the sheriff, it has that 2% listed in it. It's deducted from our tax. Has it always been 2%? It's been 2% for as long as I've been it. Takes us down to the consent agenda. The three items. The approval of the minutes from our last regular meeting of December 21st. The approval of our building and wiring permits. And the approval of all general fund uh, payment of the bills. I would entertain a motion that we approve our consent agenda. So moved. I have a motion by Mr. Skinner and a second by Mr. Rylands. Is there any discussion on that motion? I'll call for the question. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, those opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Uh, Tom, are you still with us? I am. Good. Did you did you <laughs> did you like all those motions, Tom? Did that make your yeah, name? I always yeah. I love did we do them right? And, uh, correctly? Yeah. <laughs> You're over there in Parkersburg, is that right? Uh, I am, and I sincerely wish that I was there. Yeah. <laughs> he he was it's a lot warmer over in Parkersburg tonight, is that, <laughs> is that right? <laughs> no, I, I have no idea. <laughs> I haven't been outside. Uh, drinking again, huh, Tom? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, Tom. Okay. <laughs> Strategic issues. I'm gonna I'm gonna work your report right into the uh, ordinance considerations. You want to start out with your general report, and then we'll evolve into ordinance 422 and 423. Yeah, that's fine, and uh, and I appreciate the council uh, and you, Mr. Mayor. You're uh, you're allowing me to participate in meeting by phone. I sincerely uh, regret that a, an unavoidable conflict has kept me away uh, in person this evening. But, uh, but to report uh, the matters, there are three matters that have uh, taken up the bulk of my time uh, over the past few weeks, um, and. Uh, 
uh, so forgive me if any of these have been previously discussed, but the, uh, the Dominion ACP water plant improvement project agreement, uh, I'm sure Jerry mentioned that that's been finalized and sent off. I don't know what the status of that is, uh, but in any event, uh, was working on that. There was a human resources issue that we're working through. Uh, and then uh, finally, uh, matter which we'll discuss here uh, again is the, the drafting of uh, the uh, ordinance uh, criminalizing the dumping of asbestos at the transfer station. So uh, those are the matters that I've, I've, I've uh, spent uh, the bulk of my time on, uh, you know, as well as uh, you know, general, uh, you know, advising to uh, committee heads or you know, department heads and, and so on. So, I'd be happy to entertain any questions, or we can move on to uh, to the two ordinances that are that are on the agenda. Any questions of a general nature for Tom before we take up ordinance 422 on second and final? Oh, well, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Uh, one, you know, given the, the breaking news from the century, I don't know to what degree that has possibly been discussed earlier, but uh, uh, it might be advisable just to to uh, know that they're. We have some new issues with compact backhoe that that will probably be uh, taking it some time, and and uh, uh, we'll, I will uh, keep the council appropriately informed as as those develop. Yep. Thanks, John. Ordinance 422 of the City of Buchanan, amending and modifying and reenacting Ordinance Number 409 of the City of Buchanan, known, cited, and referred to as the Buchanan Parking Ordinance. Tom, this is uh, all of the little tinkerings that we did are reflected in this current draft. Is that correct? That is uh, correct. And, and really, the only amendment that was made uh, at the first reading was to remove the 24 hour restriction on uh, the two hour, uh, 24, the, the 24 hour restriction on the two hour cumulative. Right. Uh, parking. So, it, in other words, the two hour parking rule will remain unchanged from what it is now. Uh, the balance of the ordinance has appeared on first reading uh, is as it was on first reading. Thanks, Tom. I would entertain a motion that we approve on second and final reading ordinance 422 of the city of Buckingham. Mm -hmm. I have a motion by Mrs. Albaugh and a second by Mr. Rylands. Is there any discussion on the motion? Mr. Skinner. I, I just want to point out that on, right before, on the, on the very last page, um, it does it does say uh, this ordinance shall be deemed effective 30 days following the second reading passage and adoption by council on February 3rd. So are, so are we? That's 30 days from so today. We're, okay, so we're, this is it. This is it. This is it, okay. Yep. Because uh, we, we had discussed, I thought, maybe doing this, running this a third time, last last time. That, no, it, was, it wasn't necessary because okay. we incorporated the changes at the last meeting. Okay, right. all right. Pam? Yeah. I wasn't here last time, but I've had some people shut up. Concerns about the two hours downtown. You know, we have five hair salons on Main Street and business slash businesses. And... If somebody goes in to get a perm or a hair color or something like that and they want to go eat afterwards or do a little bit of shopping, it's going to be more than two hours for them to be in the downtown by now. And um, I would like to see it get changed to three hours myself because, you know, I've mentioned it before in the past. Yeah. And, um, you know, like they say, you can't even go in and sit down and eat and go do any other anything because sometimes you not get out of a restaurant in an hour at a time. Well, Pam, the idea with this policy, and we've had two-hour parking on Main Street for 30 years. I know, I know. Um, the, the idea is to make even more liberal for all on-street parking to be two hours, and we have eight city municipal parking lots. I know, but if you're going to be longer than two hours, you should park the extra 100 feet in one of those parking lots, which you can park in for 21 well, hours well, for free. Well, a lot of these people are older people that yeah. can't, you know, that are complaining to me. You want to put this in the form of a motion? We, we've 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 been advancing this ordinance. Here. I wasn't here last. Well, this is this is the same thing that we I did know. last <laughs> January, <laughs> January twenty seventh. No, no, three hours before. Yeah. Also. Um, so you want to you want to make it in the form of a motion? Yes, I would. Mrs. Caperi is moving that we change the two hour uh, parking policy to three hours. Is there a second to that motion? I'll 
I'll second it, but I have a question. We already had a motion. Right. Do we have another motion in the middle of a motion? Or I made the first motion. Well, this is a from a parliamentary from a parliamentary point of view. This is a motion to amend the order, okay. which takes precedence over, right. over okay. other motions. Okay. 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 So there's a motion and a second to modify the ordinance to from two hours to three hours. <clears throat> What's is there discussion on that motion? Is this going I to know. Modify this being the second reading, we go back to go again here, or what? Yes, it, we would have to have an additional reading. It, this is a gutting of this ordinance, absolute gutting. You were going to say something, Tom? Well, no, I was just I was going to make that very point that if the if the motion carries, the ordinance would have to be brought back for a third reading uh, in two weeks. And we already have si how many signs? Jerry's gone, but how many signs do we have? Um, Twenty six signs. Something we have like signs that. and we have tickets. Oh, really? um, Mayor, I, to, to speak to this, um, I kind of look at this a little bit like, or maybe a restaurant table. Um, you want restaurant tables to turn over. That's right. We want we want parking spaces to turn over. And I understand what what Pam's saying because I, I brought up similar points last week or last time. But I, when we were talking about regulating two hours only within a 24-hour period the fact that that's that part is gone if you park for two hours on main street you can park two hours on spring street you can park two hours on kanawa street you can park two hours in a parking lot so if you go to lunch and you're there for a while you could move your vehicle from the in front of cj maggie's for example over to spring street and therefore you're not in trouble with the two hour limit. I, I personally think two hours is, is it, since we've taken out the 24 hour, the two hours within 24 hour limit, I think two hours is, is adequate for, for our downtown because if we start increasing that, we're going to run into even more parking problems with people not turning over spaces quickly enough and we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna run into people with the potential for more abuse of the system versus what we're trying to accomplish as people respecting the system and, and making it able for people to come downtown and park. So I, I would be for, uh, I would not be for three hours, I would be for two hours, um, kind of keeping it the, the way it is. I think in a lot of cases, it does the two hour clock doesn't start ticking until Alice marks the tire. That's right. <laughs> and the chances of your tire being marked at the exact with the exact moment you're parked is pretty slim. And my guess would, I mean, I'm not talking out of school here, you make routes around around there, you know, nine or 11 or. I can give you a brief overview of it. Sure. It's, it's new to me, but um, on a day when I do parking, and I don't do parking every day because I'm half time parking, half time office, um, I try to get out right at 8.30. So, you know, it, it's 8.30, it takes me 30 minutes if it's just, if there, there's nothing untoward, you know, to make a lap. So that would mean I would go back again at 10.30 and start a new lap. It doesn't always work at exactly 10.30. It's not always that I'm exactly at 10.30 when I'm going back out. You know, maybe I'm making a, a, a driving patrol, so it's not exactly then. Um, once I start at 10.30, usually that's when I'm coming across someone who's been there, you know, I've got the second strike on their tire. So, you know, I've got to stop and, and write a, a warning ticket, which you get three warning or two warnings before you even get a ticket. Um, so that's adding time, you know, maybe someone's parked in, in a place where they're not supposed to, that adds time. So I start that second route at, at 10.30, which would mean I would do another one at 12.30, well, usually my lunch is from 12 to 1, so I'm not even doing another one until 1. So it, it's not exactly, you know, I mean, it, it's, I try to be as close as I can be, and I'm never early, so no one's, you know, it, if I do happen to go at 1030, or say if I go at 1, and then I go again at, at 3, and I'm, for some reason I'm going much faster at 3 than I am at 1, so that I'm on North Spring, 
10 minutes earlier, I'm not going to, I, I'm not going to cheat them out of their 10 minutes. I'll go and finish and go back that way. I mean, they are always getting at least two hours in between. And, uh, yeah, um, and that's, that's probably the minimum. I mean, yeah, that's it's more like uh, it could be, you, you know, three hours without, you know, without getting a warning or a ticket because of the way your your timing of your routes is. Right. So, I mean, at, at this, we have been talking about this in three years, a long time, yeah. and I don't really want to try to change it. At, at the at the end, and I, I mean, and you you speak about restaurants. Our average table turn is 55 minutes, so uh, that wouldn't really impact if you wanted to go shopping. I think you know hairdressers are a little different circumstance that could take longer, I guess. Yeah, it does. But, but I I'm think, saying there's five five hair salons on Main Street. Period. Do, is but, there currently a lot of them getting citations or? Um, they're just they're, afraid of it. They're afraid of it, I think. And but it's, it's not. Old, it's older people. And, and do they need handicapped accessibility? They can't park in one of the side not lots and walk around. Yeah. Because that's, that's what I was concerned about last time older or handicapped people. But I think, you know, for quick in it, but, that, but this for two is hours. Thing. Is, if I go to get my hair colored, you're talking an hour and a half, two hours. If I want to go eat, you right. need another two. Then but they that, could park. They could plan ahead and. They park. could move the car down. Right, the but they could park. I know park that. A lot you got to understand. With. We're talking about older people. I understand right. that. Yeah. You, know, yeah. you know, it's not easy. For, you know. I understand. Yeah. That. I, I, I am concerned about people who are older. Anyway. I, I don't want to be, incompassionate at all. But I, we, we, this came up in 2015 when I was still town attorney for Buckingham. Yeah. We paid uh, 5,600 dollars for a professional to conduct a study and make recommendations to a parking committee that was designated by this city council. And those recommendations were vetted, they've been amended, it went through consolidated public works. Everybody's been on board with this policy and, and now it's time to do it. And I, I think the two hour policy is what we should stick with. But there's a motion and a second on the table. We have now discussed that motion. So without further discussion, uh, we'll, we'll do a roll call vote on Pam's uh, amended motion to the ordinance to go to a three-hour parking situation. I'll start with Council Lady Capari. How do you vote? To go for the three-hour, yes. Yes for three hours. Mr. Rollins? No. Dr. Alloy? No. Mr. Skinner? No. Mrs. Alba? No. Mayor votes no. Motion fails. Now, Thank you for bringing Thank you. Now, we, we have still before us Ordinance uh, 3, 422 on second and final reading. May I have a motion that we consider the adoption of this ordinance tonight as it is now drafted? So moved. We already have that. We already have one. We already have that. Well. We did it again. <laughs> you can't really technically have two motions on the table at the same time. So we, we overrode the first motion with the amendment. So now I have a motion by Mrs. Albaugh. May I have a second to her motion? Second. Thank I have a second by Mr. Rylands. <laughs> Is there discussion on the motion? One, one more quick thing. I want to, I want to, um, uh, I want to make sure that everyone understands that we're not, that we're, uh, previous discussions included language that, that in, involved the word meters. We're not putting meters back in. Uh, the North Spring Street lot um, will be using the kiosk. That is correct, right? Some of the spaces. For in 18 the North spaces. Yes, kiosk. yes, but we're not reinstalling the meters that were taken out. I want to make sure that that is clarified for everyone because um, I, I was, I, I've heard that a couple of times. So There is not a parking meter in Buchanan. Right. So, I think there's been so a lot there, of dis just misinformation, discussions used. back and forth. That the meters have all been removed. Where, where, do, you, where do you see a meter? Across the, the canal? Are they they, they, cut, gone? Those, they cut them they off? Cut them yeah. off. There's yeah. yeah. No. They're in that lot. They just put tape around them. Yeah, but they're, they're, but they're still they're there. there. Yeah. But they're not being used. Right. They're still there. Yeah. 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 That's what I thought. Just, just don't pay them any attention. They're really not there. That's it. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. I'm going to call for the question. All those in favor of approving Ordinance 422 as now drafted, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. 
Uh, Mrs. Caperi is abstaining. The motion carries and the ordinance is adopted and will be effected on February 3rd. All right. Okay. Tom, maybe you want to walk us through ordinance 423? I would be happy to. Uh, let me first read if I can just to get that out of the way. Uh, ordinance number 423 of the city of Buckhannon, an ordinance one, prohibiting the disposing or the depositing of asbestos for the attempted depositing of asbestos at any facility owned or operated by the city of Buckhannon Waste Collection Board for the collection, transfer, or disposal of general waste or refuse. Two, establishing penalties for persons violating the provisions of this ordinance. Three, providing for ineligibility of persons cited or found guilty for a violation of this ordinance for issuance of building or demolition permits or contractor's licenses, and four, providing for restitution payable to the city for abatement. Uh, the, the genesis of this bill is, was found in two events that took place at a transfer station on Mudlick Road where individuals um, uh, demolished uh, structures uh, and the debris contained asbestos uh, and then uh, brought that debris to the transfer station where uh, the asbestos was then found and the city was responsible for uh, cleaning. And uh, and I don't have the, the exact figures, but those those cleanup costs were were somewhat substantial uh, if I understand, if I, if, if memory serves. A couple of thousand um, dollars, Tom. Yeah, right, in each case. Um, and uh, the, so the purpose of the ordinance is to create a criminal offense for the uh, depositing or attempted depositing of asbestos containing material, uh, which is a defined term in the ordinance, at the transfer station. Uh, those penalties, and we'll go through the ordinance section by section, but, uh, but those penalties uh, include a first offense uh, level and a second or subsequent offense level. So uh, it would be in the discretion of the municipal court how much to uh, fine. Uh, and uh, it also provides uh, that a person guilty of uh, violating this ordinance uh, would then be liable to the city for reimbursement of all of the city's costs in the uh, abatement uh, should the attempt you know come to fruition and the uh, party uh, who did the dumping be identified so we begin uh, as most ordinances do with several whereas clauses uh, the city uh, uh, recognizes uh, and the, the purpose of the in the whereas clauses we identify the purpose uh, of the ordinance and that is to protect uh, the health, uh, safety, and welfare of the city, uh, residents of the city, and visitors uh, there to particularly uh, to the transfer station. And uh, it goes without saying, without the employee uh, and the employees of the uh, transfer station from being exposed to asbestos, as well as um, I don't know if this is particularly spelled out in the ordinance, but uh, it also goes without saying to protect the city's financial interest in avoiding liability for illegal dumping of asbestos. Uh, by third, by other people. So, uh, so the whereas clauses are in there. Uh, we are uh, the city is authorized to enact this ordinance. Uh, two particular uh, things in, in, in Article Eight or Chapter Eight, Article Twelve, Section Five. Uh, the city has the authority to uh, pass uh, ordinances governing. Uh, uh, matters to prevent injury or annoyance to the public uh, from anything dangerous, offensive, or unwholesome. Uh, it is, um, I mean, it's a matter of uh, fact that asbestos is a hazardous material. It is found to be so and declared to be so uh, in state code uh, and in the United States code uh, and in state uh, rules and in federal regulations. And the city, uh, in its in the first section of findings, uh, adopts uh, the the 
conclusions of state and federal authorities that asbestos, and that uh, is a uh, that's a shorthand term for some rather complicated chemistry, um, and and we set that out, we lay that out in the uh, in the ordinance itself. Uh, asbestos is defined, and, it, and we use the definition that's used in the code of state regulations uh, to be clear about that. Um, but the uh, the council will first adopt uh, findings that. Uh, asbestos is, uh, in certain circumstances, a grave threat to individual and public health. That uh, that those particular certain circumstances are when asbestos-containing materials are torn down, um, gathered, and disposed of uh, during the demolition, repair, remodeling, or refurbishing of a structure in which they've previously been installed, and that uh, the bringing of asbestos-containing materials to the transportation transfer station is a violation of state code. It constitutes a public safety hazard and a public nuisance, and it results in significant financial expenses to the city of Buchanan because the city is then liable for abatement uh, when other people uh, dump asbestos illegally in the transfer station, and it's not caught ahead of time. Uh, we then move on to definition section. Uh, those are pretty straightforward. There are only four defined terms. Uh, uh, Article 3 contains the actual prohibition of the act of, uh, it, well, I'll just read it uh, since it's rather short. No person shall park, leave, deposit, or put aside or dispose of any asbestos or asbestos containing material on the grounds of the uh, transfer station or within a machinery bin, building pad, or facility located upon. The act itself of dumping is a violation of the ordinance as well as the attempt. And uh, for purposes of the citation, the attempt would be if an individual brings uh, a truckload of materials onto the property and, and one of the employees were to catch um, you know, the individual uh, with the materials in their truck or bin or, or whatever before they actually made the deposit uh, at the transfer station, they could still be charged with a violation of the ordinance for, for the attempt. Uh, Article 4 uh, contains the penalties, as we discussed earlier. There's a first offense uh, fine of not less than 250 nor more than $500, and a second and subsequent offense uh, fine of $500. Uh, final, uh, in addition, uh, in Article 5, it talks about restitution, that by ordinance, uh, any person found guilty of a violation of this ordinance uh, will uh, be liable to the city uh, for uh, re reimbursing the city for all costs incurred in the, in the abatement of the asbestos unlawfully disposed. So clearly that, that would not attach in the case of an attempt uh, that was thwarted, but only in the case of um, a violation of the ordinance that was actually constituted. Uh, in addition, uh, as a deterrent uh, for individuals, uh, we've added uh, or we've included in the provisions of this ordinance a certain um, matters containing individuals who hold contractors' licenses, uh, and building permits. So any person that is uh, cited or found, well, let me say first, if they're found guilty of an ordinance, uh, the city shall not uh, grant to that person uh, any building or demolition permit for a period of one year file following the final adjudication uh, issued under the ordinance. And then there's a provision for a stay uh, pending appeal and polling uh, that gets into some you know, legal weeds that may or may not wish to discuss. Um, in addition, uh, just the citation alone uh, prior to its final adjudication will be enough to prevent uh, any uh, permits being issued to that person cited, uh, just so that you know, we could get, you know, we would put the brakes on any new permit issued to a person cited. Uh, just for the citation until it can be finally adjudicated. Uh, if, uh, in addition, if uh, any uh, person is cited under the ordinance, any of their existing permits, 
uh, would be deemed suspended pending the final adjudication thereof. What we are attempting to do here, and finally, uh, if the contract license issued by the city that the person uh, found guilty uh, would be uh, suspended for a period of one year final, following the final adjudication uh, of the citation. Uh, and that provides for uh, the, the typical the, uh, the severability clause that is in most uh, uh, ordinances and the effective date uh, thereof. So with that, uh, if the council were to pass this on first reading tonight and second reading two weeks from tonight, it would take effect on February 17th uh, of this year. And uh, with that, happy to uh, take your questions. Thank you. Yeah. Questions for Tom? I, Mayor, I have just one, you know, we're on the waste board together. The the not less than the fine penalty article four. Yeah. Two hundred fifty dollars. Not less than two fifty. Not more than five hundred. Right. We do we think that's that's what we voted on at that time. I was trying to remember. Uh, that's For what, the first offense. Yeah. That's first. That's first offense. Offense. Second offense would be an automatic maximum of five hundred. No discretion to the municipal court judge. Okay. And by the way, the uh, waste collection board did approve uh, this. Uh, did recommend the approval of this ordinance by city council yes. at its meeting earlier today. Any other <coughs> questions or discussion? Hearing of the need for none, I'm going to call for the question. All those in favor of approving ordinance 423 on the 1st of, uh, did I not get a motion, motion yet? Yeah. I would entertain a motion. <laughs> so moved. <laughs> Mrs. Albaugh has made a motion. May I have a second to her motion that we approve ordinance 423 on the first of two readings? Second. I have a second by Council Lady Capari. Any further discussion on the motion? I swear we already did the discussion. He started Gosh. reading. Anyway, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed like sign. The minutes will reflect that the motion carried unanimously. <laughs> my Mr. Rogers sweater. <laughs> Don't miss Mr. Beautiful Rogers. Beautiful day in the neighborhood. Okay. Uh, thanks, Tom. I don't know that we need you for anything else, Tom. Uh, well, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Uh, I do have a quick question uh, uh, okay. for, to, for Tom. Um, Consider the source on the quick question. So how will particularly um, people who have contractors licenses how will they be informed of this so that they'll well, be extra I, careful I, of their workers etc <laughs> um, you know the council you know, we may we may uh, consider um, issuing some kind of uh, you know putting some kind of insert in the uh, the uh, permit the, uh, permit yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. permit pack yeah, exactly. Okay, that's a good idea. I yeah. like that. Uh, besides the new coverage that I presume that this ordinance would generate, uh, and yeah. you know, we could even uh, identify any you know, current outstanding permits and and make a uh, uh, make some kind of notice oh, available uh, to them, some kind of mailing uh, available uh, to put them on notice uh, should the ordinance be adopted on second reading uh, in two weeks, okay. and, and letting them know that. Uh, that their licenses and permits uh, will be um, uh, in jeopardy uh, should they uh, attempt to uh, bring uh, asbestos to the transfer station. This is not uh, some clever uh, revenue generating thing. Uh, we're a $13 million a year budget organization when you add up the general fund with all the utilities. It's about trying to change people's conduct. And on two different occasions during the past six months alone, we had to shut down our waste collection operations out of the transfer well, I'm not questioning that. Oh, I just I wanted to make this, sure yeah. that no, I, I agree they with her. understood how steep the yeah. consequences yeah. were. I agree because with her. other people can yeah. impact that on the contractor. Yeah, absolutely. We, we have an insert. There won't be any question. That right. Do not go yeah. right. How that. much did it cost, David, for us to couple clean of, that up? A couple of thousand dollars. That we time. had to eat. The yeah, second time we just had to shut down the operation until we confirmed whether or not it was a hot load or not. Right. So it cost us both times. The, 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 the first load was hot, and right. the entire bin had to be right. treated as though it was contaminated by asbestos. It's a pain in the rump kind of a thing. All right, Tom. Uh, All right, good. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Ambie, you get the magic button here to, uh, thanks Tom, we'll see you soon.
Give him the boot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, show that I was watching the other night on TV where they hit the switch and the person falls down the tube. And <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I don't know. I've uh, had experience in real estate, and just like you do your lead, lead based paste, uh, lead based paint disclosures yeah. on that asbestos in that package, you can put it in an acknowledgement where they oh, read they the ordinance. Off and yeah. Bottom out. John Doe hereby acknowledged reading of the asbestos ordinance. Yeah. Ordinances yeah. they have to sign. Yeah. You're talking about uh, nailing somebody's feet to the floor pretty quick. Yeah. Mm. In the one instance, with one of the two instances, the party never bothered to get a permit period to raise the structure. Wow. Uh, they tore it down, put it in the cart, took it out to the transfer station. So, you know, they did. They didn't even get the permit. Yet alone, uh, the fact that there was potential contamination. Well, outside it's the city limits, wasn't it? Uh, the first one was, the second one was on Cleveland Avenue. So That's a good point, though. Yeah, I mean, that is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'll try to incorporate that in our permit. Thank you. F3. Uh, there is a letter in your packet that I signed back on July 17 uh -huh. to send to D. Lowry with uh, the First Energy Foundation. Uh, Teresa Summers spoke with Bryson Van Nostrand earlier today, and he says that the application is complete, ready for my signature, and to give over to City Hall. And as of the time we closed at 4:30, the application wasn't here. I would like to move on this. Um, there have been a couple of minor uh, tweaks to the application from what we were considering way back in July. Uh, we have been assured that the First Energy Foundation is going to give us money for our theater project. And uh, the longer we hold off on getting this thing in the mail, the longer it's going to be before we get some money so that we can continue the excellent work that we've already enjoyed uh, relative to the Colonial Theater. So I'm going to ask Council's permission uh, to authorize me to execute this grant application. Uh, hopefully it will have the, the final version in my hands tomorrow. And then we will include the executed application in the packet for January 18th. Okay. If you all are good with that uh, approach, I would entertain a motion that I be authorized to sign that application. So moved. I have a motion by Mr. Ryland. Second. I have a second by Mrs. Caperi. Is there discussion on the motion? I'm just not comfortable voting on it until I know what's in it. So I'll either vote no or abstain, but that's extremely minor tweaks. From well, there's what we not took up in there's July. Not really that's, any details in this. It's, just what you want done, but not what. The first energy. All right, let me let me tell you. First Energy okay. Foundation. They wanted to they wanted to know how much uh, naming rights would be, and we hadn't identified that in the original application. So if they give us a hundred thousand um, dollars, a part of the building, such as the uh, foyer or the performing arts area, would be the First Energy Foundation foyer at the Colonial Theater. But this isn't an application. That's what it, this is just the letter. The letter. Yeah, we, we, we approved an earlier application that we had to change to conform with the first energy requirements. And Bryson has undertaken those changes that included the opportunity for them to secure naming rights. Right. So where's the first application? <coughs> this is just your letter of interest. It's in the July, uh, July packet way back when. If, if you want to table it to the 18th, I'm Well, no, I'm the only person who's concerned about it, so yeah. I'm just, it's, I'll just name. I'm not concerned. Can, yeah, no, I, I just don't remember seeing an application, just yeah. this letter it's of interest. A, it's, a, it's a good question, and, and I I thought we would have the July application back in here, but it didn't <laughs> make it It's just a letter back. of interest. Let maybe, maybe we go through with this and approve it, Mayor, and then ask Amy to get a copy of that yeah. to be filed with this if for a matter of record. Well, yeah. if, if you feel better about waiting on it until the If I'm the only one move on it, I'm uh, just expressing my concern. Yeah, I, I, I don't like to approve anything that I haven't seen. Yeah. We well, did see we it that the hard way. Well, so no, we yeah. didn't. I, I don't remember seeing an application. I just remember seeing a letter of interest and hearing that we would get to see an app so, full application. Since we are meeting next week, yeah. anyway, why don't, we, why don't we just wait and do that next week? That way we're not waiting a full two weeks, yeah. and we can... That way we can have it and look at it and everybody will be... Remember, we got a full water board 
agenda starting at four o'clock, but I think we can get both these done in 15 minutes. Uh, so would you mind? Well, rescinding rescinding your motion. I rescind my motion. All right. We'll, uh, we'll take it up on the other. All right, F4. Rem uh, reminder to fill board vacancies. I've got some recommendations and I have cleared all of these folks. <coughs> This has been on the agenda for the last three meetings, and I asked all of you if you had any uh, folks in mind to let me know, and nobody uh, let me know. So these are my recommendations to fill the uh, current board vacancies. I'm going to recommend that the two new members of the Buchanan Planning Commission be Curtis Wilkerson and Matt Kerner. Uh, both of them have uh, agreed to serve on our Planning Commission. I'm recommending that the two uh, vacancies on our Animal Care and Control Commission be filled by Allison Clausen and Dr. Tanya Pickens, local uh, veterinarian. And I'm recommending that the city appointee to the Fire Civil Service Commission be Abigail Benjamin. Uh, Abby is uh, Rob Rupp's daughter who came back a, a year ago. Well, Rob, actually Rob, gave Rob, birth to her. <laughs> Rob serves on three different city commissions and boards, so they might know him a little better in the city context than that. But anyway, Abby uh, Rupp uh, is a local attorney who came here a year ago, and uh, she's been looking to get more community active. So I think they're all excellent folks. And Ab Abigail agreed also. Yes, yes, I spoke with all five of these okay. folks. Yeah. yeah. Any. Uh, any thoughts on these matters? Matt, I would entertain a motion that we fill these vacancies with these five uh, folks. So moved. I have a motion by Mrs. Albaugh. Second. I have a second by Mr. Rylands. Is there discussion on this motion? I think great. Call for the question. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign, motion carries. F5. Amby, you're going to have to explain this one. Approval for Amby to receive information from the state tax department. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't have to be Andy, but... Um, oh, no, you're, oh, no, you're really stuck with it. This is, all, this is all yours, Andy. Nobody else. Well, um, I needed to... I, I wanted to do a little bit of internal auditing with some of our uh, taxes that we received from business that can be now. And to receive that information, of course, you already know that's all confidential information. Anything we receive, <coughs> anything we obtain from residents about tax information is completely confidential by code and of course the state tax department wants to ensure that it remains that way so they want to kind of limit the access that people have to their their files and in order to do that the mayor has, has to authorize me or some agent to obtain that information and of course council uh, needs to authorize the mayor to let someone the logical person to exercise this function is our director of finance and administration. So uh, I would entertain a motion that I be authorized to sign the necessary form to the state tax department, uh, permitting AMBI to engage in those conversations and receipt of documents with our state tax department. So moved. I have a motion by Mr. Skinner. And I have a second to his motion. This is all Ball has seconded that. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing of the need for none, I'll call for that question. All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, like sign, motion. Carries. And that takes us down to comments and announcements. This is all, Bob. Okay. Good meeting tonight, everyone, and I hope everybody had a happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and a New Year's. And um, I'm hoping that this upcoming year, some election time, I am running for office, and my partner in crime who is not here tonight he said mary go ahead and make that announcement and i said no nah, i won't do that but i am going to do that <laughs> okay because i think that um, um we are a, a good strong council so i'm letting you know that jake david thomas and mary Allball are both um going to sign up on january the 8th for city council seats and we appreciate you both anything else mary um, no, we already covered most of the stuff from Waste Board, so okay. we're Thank good. You. Thank you. Pam Caperi. I just want to um, wish everybody a happy new year and I uh, want to welcome Callie Sams. Um, looking forward, hopefully she can get a lot of money for us in all areas. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're hoping for. <laughs> um, 
Also, um, in this inclement weather, I hope people are mindful of their neighbors, especially elderly people, to get to check on them. Uh, if you have the time and the energy, get out and clean their sidewalks if you can. And another thing, we have an ordinance about animals being left out in the cold and everything, and you will be fined if you get caught your animal out. Especially that below zero stuff. This yeah. is torturous. Yeah, it is. Anything else, Pam? Thank you. Mr. Rylands. Well, I would hope that in 2018 we continue to uh, work together in the community's best interest. And uh, a little phrase that I like to remind myself a lot of times is that uh, let's get out of the way of success and don't uh, become an obstructionist or or otherwise hinder the progress that's happening around us. Uh, and uh, I see great things happening I, uh, and uh, just continue to work together and also welcome our new employees and we're all hopeful that they uh, they are very successful. Thanks, you, Jack. Lester Skinner. I have nothing tonight. Oh, come on. Wow. Now, I'm sure you have a statement, so I'll, I'll yield to you. I don't see any paperwork. Oh, it's oh. over there. Oh. And it's, it's, it's long, so. But first, since Dave Thomas isn't here, our excellent uh, city recorder, who keeps me straight, even when I don't need being straightened out. You always get straightened out. Right? Well, you got some multiple oh, pages. Oh, come on. But thanks for asking. Nothing at all? Yeah. Jeez, Skinner would have just skipped over you. That's okay. This is in the spirit of the uh, governor's state of the state address and the president's. I, I've got a state of the city address, so bear with me. <laughs> they, they just pull the sign. <laughs> go, go to the bathroom again or something. <laughs> the beginning of a new year poses a timely opportunity for us to look ahead, to consider our future. I believe that our community is excellently postured to further raise the bar on our quality of life here. Please indulge me for a few minutes as I share our plans department by department for 2018. Our utility and public safety operations are the core of our essential services. Our waste collection board will launch its new toter system in March. This will make our services more efficient, more employee friendly, and all residents and businesses alike will be fully accountable for the services provided. All residents will be provided with a 96 gallon container for all garbage that will be picked up and dumped into our collection fleet in an automated way. All containers are encoded with a distinct customer barcode that is automatically read and data entered at time of pickup. In combination with our streets and parks department, we need to realize construction of a new welding and tool building at our Mudlick Run facility. Jerry Arnold will share details soon. Jeff Wamsley's guys continue to perform in exemplary fashion. Our water board will experience a very busy year. In the next few weeks, we'll integrate the new Victoria Hill water tank into our system and then decommission the St. Joseph's tank. Our reserve water supply will increase by about 600,000 gallons as a result of this activity, all as part of anticipation of future growth in our community, some associated with the nearing completion of Corridor H. Our cooperative arrangement with the Atlantic Coast Pipeline Project will result in the undertaking of about $2 million worth of improvements to our water system that will be borne by ACP. These improvements would have been undertaken in the future in-house with the cost borne by our residents and businesses. So this project pushes us years ahead as our water work system is greatly enhanced without having to increase fees. Currently, and as of December 29, Buchanan ranks 46th out of the 369 PSC regulated water utilities in the state of West Virginia. That means we provide our water services among the most affordable communities in all of West Virginia and are at the 12.4 lowest rates in our entire state. The water plant work completed in 2017 has added decades of service to our current plant and thus defers the tens of millions of dollars in plant replacement costs for many, many years. Water Superintendent Kelly Arnold's staff is performing outstandingly. Our waterworks have never been better positioned than they are right now. Our sanitary board continues to function in an exemplary manner. 
opened in 1987 with a then 30 to 40 year life expectancy, engineers Sam Ludlow and Raz Rizzo now estimate that in 2018, our sewer plant should endure for another 40 to 50 years, given the excellent periodic upgrades and maintenance of our existing physical plant operations, all again undertaken in-house. Currently, and as of December 29, in following rate increases during the past two years, Buchanan still ranks 143rd out of the 321 PSC-regulated sewer utilities in the state of West Virginia. That means our sewer services still rank among the most affordable communities in all of West Virginia and are at the 44.5% lowest rates in our state. During 2017 and after decades of discussion, all storm sewer operations were formally designated as being undertaken by our sanitary board. Our sewer staff has been engaged in extensive planning within and outside of our corporate limits to improve the stormwater system. In streets and parks, there are a number of projects identified for 2018. Many more paving and sidewalk projects are planned, including near the city seal mural, Kanawha, Spring, and Florida streets. Our North Buchanan area will realize important improvements, including sidewalk projects along North Florida Street, First Street, and Morton Avenue. The North Buchanan Park will be rededicated prior to Strawberry Festival, with handicap accessible parking, enhanced ADA compliance, and new playground equipment. Jawbone Park, Stocker Youth Center, Traders Alley, Milkman Lane, and our public safety complex will realize significant and very visible project improvements. We'll dedicate the new Green Park and Bobcat benches. Our river trail will be further enhanced with construction of a new pavilion to be located near the boat ramp and the new dog park. The dog park itself will continue to be developed by our excellent city crews with support funding coming from the volunteers comprising our dog park committee. We will work with the cycling folks and extend our river trail to our high school and beyond. We will advance the Gateway West project, ultimately realizing sidewalks and period lighting coming off of the first Buchanan exit and continuing all the way to West Virginia Wesleyan College. There will not be a prettier thoroughfare in all of West Virginia when this project is completed. The 16 intersect points downtown will be made entirely ADA compliant as a result of a new state commitment, the value of which is approximately $160,000. We resumed cemetery mowing in-house in 2017, saving our residents thousands of dollars annually while employing new seasonal workers. Grants have permitted us to make tremendous strides in the rehabilitation of the Colonial Theater. We have a new floor that can sustain 200 tons of weight and the new roof nears completion. This facility will be a crown jewel of our community when completed, servicing our arts entities as well as our youth. We had a soft launch of our Stockard Youth Center Auditorium Gymnasium Complex and many more fundraisings are planned as we try to edge closer to undertaking the project for the benefit of our youth. Rob Barber and his crew continue to work their magic. The entrances to town are receiving some much needed sprucing up, replete with new plantings and lighting. We'll realize community fruit orchards during the 2018 growing season. We're going to expand our wildflower program in 2018. Brad Hawkins' guys simply amaze us. Our police department welcomed a new member in 2017 with the hire of Sammy Chris, who completed his academy training just last month. We're starting 2018 with new testing to replenish our list of eligibles and will replace an officer who resigned in December. Our officers are unanimously committed to CALEA accreditation. We continue to develop holistic policies in addressing our drug epidemic. Kudos to Matt Gregory's excellent officers and staff and special thanks to our VIPs as well for protecting our lives and property. Our fire department similarly welcomed new members in 2017 with John Brugnoli and Tanner Smith who are performing excellently. Our firefighters are committed to pursuing IFAA accreditation. The collaboration among our paid and volunteer fighters, firefighters continues to establish Buchanan as one of the best prepared fire departments in the state. 
our guys need a new rescue pumper truck and the council needs to prepare for helping them purchase that new vehicle in 2018. This vehicle will permit us to retire two or three 1990s vehicles from our fire fleet. We will partner with the county commission and the volunteers to realize the necessary funds, but this new fully equipped vehicle is expected to cost about $500,000. Thanks to all of our firefighters for their selfless time and commitment to protecting our lives and property. We'll complete the exterior improvements to the public safety complex with new lighting, reconfigured parking spaces, landscaping, and dedication of the new police department blue wall to complement the fire department's red wall dedicated during Friendly Way Day in 2017. Our community scrapbook, scrapbook wall will come to be dedicated in the frequently used community and training room, which by the way, needs a few more tables and chairs. Callie Cronin Sams will make us better information sharers while we are very confident that we'll realize more grant opportunities than ever before. Amby Jenkins, our finance and administration director, continues to perform yeoman's work for us and our city hall staff has never been stronger than it is right now. 2018 will see Harbor Freight locate its second West Virginia store right here within our corporate limits. Stone Tower Brews will open later this month. The Innovation Center will break ground during 2018. The Opera House will be completed by Strawberry Festival. Developers continue to invest substantially in our downtown. We have virtually 100% storefront occupancy on Main Street. We'll continue to make community care and St. Joseph's Hospital successful as we partner with both entities on projects. We'll continue to work with the American Legion and VFW on various projects, including plans to develop the Veterans Way Loop and expand the Flags for the Fallen project. We'll partner with the West Virginia Strawberry Festival to again help stage the most successful festival in all of West Virginia. It's the single most important event each year in our community, and it's an opportunity to show off what we do to the, for the entire region. We'll continue to work closely with Create Buchanan, Art 26201, Buchanan Community Theater, Buchanan Choral Society, and all other arts-related groups to expand public arts in all forms, visual and performing. Our primary partners will benefit from our collaboration, West Virginia Wesleyan College, St. Joseph's Hospital, the Upshur County Commission, the Upshur County School System, the CVB, the Chamber of Commerce, and the Development Authority. We'll continue to support small business through our Facades Grants Program. The new parking policy, now fully affected, will be a gift to residents, visitors, and downtown businesses alike. We will continue to honor and support the Blessing Box and Little Free Library programs and excellent volunteers and the excellent volunteers that make those programs so successful and distinguished by Canon from all other places. We will continue to partner with Matt Kerner and Opportunity House to remove the stigma of addiction while creating a welcoming environment for those in recovery. We'll partner in the second annual Ha Ha Hope and Help Assembly in September, followed by our Children's Festival, Truck Fest, Fall Fest, and the Haunted River Trip. Festival Fridays are already scheduled for a full summer season. We'll enjoy another year of music on the river on summer Sunday evenings. We'll collaborate with the River Festival Group as they celebrate our community's water supply late next summer. We will do all these things while being cleaner, greener, and more sustainable than ever before. We will do all these things while being more inclusive than ever before. We shall not tolerate the actions of those who seek to divide us. Anyone, regardless as to their race, ethnicity, gender, religion, age, handicap, or orientation, who seeks to be part of our many successes is invited to participate with us and to offer their help to making our community even better. Our mission is not to be the best community around. Our, community, our mission is simply to be the best community that we can be. I have no doubt that with our excellent staff of 80 to 85 full-time employees, that we shall take our community to another level during 2018. Our outstanding employees make all these things possible. As we begin the budgeting process for the 2018-19 fiscal year next month, and recalling my commitment to our employees that this council honored back in October of 2016 
by then approving a 50 cent per hour pay raise for all full-time employees, I ask us to work together, that is, this city council and our four utility boards, to find the means to implement an additional modest cost of living increase, effective July 1, 2018, of an additional 50 cents an hour for all of our full-time employees. I'd like to establish a municipal minimum wage of $10 per hour for all full-time city employees. Our success as a city is attributed to our folks in the trenches who are repairing broken utility lines at 3 a.m. when it's below zero. The guys who answer the police and fire calls at all hours and under the most unpleasant of circumstances. Our workers who are hanging off the back of garbage trucks. We need to recognize the value of those laborers and we need to retain our very valuable workforce. We truly are all in this together. That's all I have. I would entertain a motion that we adjourn. Are we not doing an executive session? Uh, yes, we do need to uh, have a short executive session. May I have a motion that we adjourn into executive session after we uh, convene out of regular session? So moved. I have a motion second. by Mr. Skinner. I have a second by Mr. Rollins. Is there discussion on that motion? No decisions will be made in the executive session. Thank you all for coming. Mr. Dusenberry, thanks for coming. Appreciate having me. Oh, thank you. Thank you.